I'm going to make a digital countdown timer. So I'm going to do the rectangle tool and I don't want it to have a border so click there and I'm going to make it have a dark blue border. So draw one of the shapes, something like that, and then I'm going to use the selection tool to grab it, and then Control C and Control V, and Control V is paste, and it's got this handy lining up thing, and Control V again, but this time I want it to rotate, so I click on there. Click back on the selection tool, and then Control C and Control V. So we're doing the vertical ones now. Control V again, you get the idea. Control V again. So you can use the arrow keys to move things so they're in the right place, but make sure you've got the selection tool. Okay, so now I'm going to do the whole, th grab the whole thing. That's con and Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste. And now we've got the basic layout of a digital countdown. Map. Okay, before we go any further, we want to move these numbers to the middle of the screen. Otherwise, it's going to look weird when we make our finished movies. So I'm just going to drag a box, move it to the middle. And I'm going to make this a bit small around the edge. If you click once on the white background and then look down at the bottom, you can change the size. I'm going to change it to about 300 pixels by 250 pixels and then click OK. Now you can undo it by doing Control Z but I think I've got it just about right. That's perfect. OK, so what next? Now if you click on each of these things you want it so that there's only one thing selected. Like you can see that one got one thing selected and that one I've got one thing selected but when I click that one it's selecting two so just make sure you may need to delete things and make sure they're maybe not quite touching but you don't want things to be doubly selected because you're going to be deleting these in a bit okay good now I've basically deleted a couple of things and redone them so I can select any one of these squares without having two of them get selected at once. Okay, so this is like our digital clock face and we've got one frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F6 to duplicate that frame. I'm going to do it 30 times. Three, four, five. You can keep on going until you get up to 30. If you go too far you can just highlight them and right click and remove frames. So this starts at 30. I'm going to make it look like 30 by clicking getting rid of these things. Make sure you're on the first frame here so that now looks like a 30. Now if I click on the next frame you want it to look like a 2 Okay, made a mistake, so Control Z. This is the way a 2 works. And this is the way the 9 looks. So that's now 30, 29. This is going to be 28, so that makes life a bit easier. Because that one's already looking like an 8. 27. And that's basically it. You just keep on going. There might be a quicker way of doing it, but, but this will work. And it should work fairly easy. So we're on 26 now. Ooh. And remember, if you make a mistake, do Control Z. 
if you've got them all selected like this just click once on the page and then press delete so I had to Google this just to double check but this is how the number four looks Okay, so I'm almost down to single figures now and I can see a bit of something I can speed up. So when I get to what should be 9, so 10, 9, I'm going to delete all these frames here. So remove frames, right click, highlight, remove frames. I'm going back to 10 and then to 9. Before I do anything else I'm just going to highlight all of this first number and delete it. And then I'm going to click on the frame and do F6 until I get to 30 which will save me deleting that first number all the time. Okay so 10, this is going to be 9 going to be 8 so it doesn't need to change this is going to be 7 6 and so on okay so I'm almost down to the zero now so you can see I'm getting right down to it and just before I do the one because I'm on 30, I want there to be a 0. If I press F6, that gives me an extra 1. So now I can go back one step and I can delete that and then make this one a 0. Okay, so you should have your countdowner. And what we can do as well is we can add a new layer which maybe makes things flash so that when it gets close to sort of the last five it gives you a visual alert. Okay, so let's make an alert counting down from five. So we need to make a new layer and I'm going to drag it behind my first layer. And then underneath the frame where it says 5, I'm going to insert timeline blank keyframe. Now, I would, would have wanted just to fill, but it doesn't let me. So I have to drag a box. I'm going to make it not have border, so no border, and a yellow fill color. I'm going to drag the box like that. You can resize it and make it look a bit better than mine, but that will do. Now, if I do click on that frame where it's underneath number 5, and just do F6 all the way until the end, and then on alternate ones, just go back and delete it, making sure you're on the right layer. Okay? Now, if I was doing this again, it might be better. I might make this one red, in fact. So make sure it's not got a border color and that it's a nice contrasting color and we should you can move it around a bit if you like but hopefully if I now go control and test movie now it's going too fast so let's just click the X to get rid of that and if you see here where it says at 12 FPS, change it to double click it and you'll get this up. And I'm going to change it to 1 frame per second and click OK. Now if I control and test a movie, it's counting down quite neatly. Okay, so I've now got my finished animated digital clock. I need to export it as a F 
as a shockwave flash file. So go file, export, export movie, and you need to save it in your area as digi clock. And that will create a shockwave flash folder. Just click OK when you get to this, which you can then import into your animated banner.